The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted many nonprofit groups around the world, including churches. How can the church survive during these difficult times, these dark times? Kelly Stickle is the lead pastor of My Victory Churches in Lethbridge and Southern Alberta. Welcome back to BCN. Yeah, it's great to be with you, Hal. Pastor Kelly, let's talk about how much has changed for the church the last few months with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Can you share a bit about what your church has gone through, especially when it comes to services? Yeah, well, of course, mid-March, all of the services got uh, closed down in, in person in the buildings. So we transitioned into online services right away, which wasn't that difficult for us because we were already online anyway. But of course, not having a live capture in a room becomes uh, extremely difficult. Not having the people in the room became very, very difficult, uh, not seeing them, not being able to minister to them in the same way. And so uh, we've had to make some qu quite a bit of adjustments. Uh, Let's talk about how that's really impacted your congregation, because you can't be there in person to counsel them, to hug them, you know, mm -hmm. to help nurture them as well, spiritually. Yeah, absolutely. How challenging has that been? It's been probably, it's been the most challenging part. Uh, the, uh, for us, the online service was, was the easy part. Uh, the, ver the difficult part is being able to uh, find and connect with and minister to people and meeting their needs where they're at without being able to, to see them and reaching out to them. And we've got over, uh, over 3,000 names on our, on our list that we've been trying to contact and, and call and make sure that everyone's okay and nobody's slipping through the cracks. So that's been, that's been navigating some interesting times. Have some of the congregants been in favor because of the COVID-19 pandemic of just viewing it online and saying, you know what, I'll just stay at home, thank you, until everything passes? Yes, yeah, every, it, most of our congregation have been happy to to join us on online uh, lots of them miss being uh, with each other in particular and in the building but a lot of them have been very comfortable with with, with online and uh, but we're excited to get back to gathering together now let's talk about how you've been reaching out to the community the non-church community my victories had a great reputation for doing that in the past what have some of the biggest needs been in our community that you've seen yeah, there's so many uh, needs, mental, physical, spiritual uh, needs. We've been, we've been active in the community before this whole event happened, the crisis happened with my city care. And so we, again, it was something that we already set up for and ready to go, but we've, we've accelerated our, our reach and we've been um, basically partnering with the city in Lethbridge as well as the two food banks here. And we've been predominantly putting our focus on food distribution and helping with food and, and to those that are isolated. And to date, I was just told the stat on the way here, uh, to date over the last 10 weeks, we've helped over 10,000 people, 10,000 individuals um, with food or uh, supplies in this time. Mostly in Lethbridge here? Or Mostly in Lethbridge, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So let's talk about maybe some of the single moms that you're helping, you know, maybe young families, some of the seniors as well. What kind of feedback are you getting from them? We're getting amazing feedback. Really encouraged. We're getting to the ice Isolated, we're, we're helping uh, feed some of the homeless that have been um, put into, into hotels and different things. We've been feeding them. Uh, we've been helping those who, who have been uh, in isolation, not able to get out to get groceries. A lot of the seniors who can't get their own groceries, we've been able to deliver uh, to their door, doorstep, um, and distanced and, and helping a lot of those people, and we're getting amazing feedback. Have you had a chance to maybe reach out to some impacted by COVID-19 here in our community? We, nothing, nothing uh, none of the infected people, we haven't reached out uh, to them. There's been so few cases, really, to be honest, in, in Lethbridge and um, in southern Alberta. And so we haven't, we haven't uh, ministered to any, anybody that's in an active case. Have you had any challenges finding volunteers to help with My City Care as well? Because people may be concerned about being infected from COVID-19. Actually, no, we've been, our volunteers are amazing. They've, we've had no problem. And one of the, one of the I think, most encouraging thing, Hal, is, is over the last while, we've, it's not just our church that stepped up. We've had um, a number of other churches in the community that have sent volunteers to My City Care and to, and to what we're doing. And so we've had an abundance of volunteers and we've been, we, they've been amazing. We've been able to uh, fully activate and, and do that. And of course, it's, it makes it difficult. The most difficult part is that you're only allowed to have gatherings of 15 volunteers at any period of time. And you have to stay within those, within those guidelines. And so it's been actually, that's been the more difficult part than actually finding the volunteers. And now the province has said that you can have up to 50 people in the church yep. for a service, but I mean, come on. <laughs> That's a pretty small service, a pretty small get together, right? Fifty. It is for it is for us. I'm I'm happy that the the province is taking this step. I I really am. I think, uh, I think the probably the churches most affected in this whole thing is the small churches, and you know because 
you know, we have, as a larger church, we have the technology. We are already online. Like I said, we have the staff to be able to do that. But a lot of the smaller churches I've really been feeling for. And so I think opening up at that size is great. But it's really difficult for us as, as a larger church. I mean, a gathering of 50. So we've taken a different uh, approach to this. And we're, we've are we encouraged our small groups, our home groups, to begin meeting in person and, and take that step and we're opening up in June uh, with our volunteers. We're doing invite-only services, and we're bringing in 50 volunteers at a time to train them uh, for when we can open up a little bit further to, to some of the new regulations and new ways that we're going to have to do church, what the new normal is. So we're taking that as a, a period of time, the 50, as a time to train. I'm just thinking as well at the same time, could you offer more services perhaps? Yes. Maybe a 9, 11, <laughs> a we 1, already, a 3, a 5. A, you know. Yeah, we already offer three services in Lethbridge and then plus you know uh, a couple services in Tabor and then a service in Claire's home in, in Lloyd and uh, Okotoks as well. So we've had multiple services around ready but so we're yeah we're talking about the poss all possibilities do we how many do we do and how many can we do and now you do some counseling as well pastor kelly yeah. let's discuss a little bit about meeting the needs of your congregants and especially spiritually and mentally right now a lot of people are feeling isolated and rates of suicide depression are going up because we can't interact with other human beings yes right i think we i don't know if this is if you realize this but I think for me personally, I've realized how little emphasis I put on interpersonal contact. Those relationships. And those relationships. Yeah. And how much they feed us and our emotions. Um, uh, I, I, would, I was with a, a senior yesterday and I had to help him out of a vehicle into in a car. And I put my hand on his back to help him out of the vehicle. And he looked at me and gave me the biggest smile and said, he says, man, he says, having somebody touch me again, he says, that, that just touched my soul. And I was like, you don't even realize it was just a hand on the back and, and not that big a deal. But we really are meant for interaction. And human beings aren't, isolation is a prison sentence. That's the, <laughs> that's the highest uh, punishment you can possibly get to be, is to be isolated. And, and so um, this, is, this is difficult on a lot of people. And it's affecting a lot of emotional health. There's, I think it's affecting marriages. It's affecting parents with, with children. Lots of that uh, going on. Also and addictions as well. Addictions people, right? are, yeah, up. And, and so there's a lot of things that this crisis, I mean, the, the numbers may be going down with the virus, but I think uh, we, we've got a lot of effects, long-lasting effects that we're going to have to work through for, for a number of years, I think, yet. What about the financial hit that the church has taken as well? I mean, people, congregants come in, they want to do a tithe or an offering, right? But a lot of times if they're at home, you know, they may not be as apt to go online and maybe make a donation to the church online. It's like, oh, I'll get around to it. Never happens. Yeah. So let's talk about the financial toll that you've taken as well. Yeah, it's, uh, th there's extra pressures when you're completely reliant on donations, as churches are. Um, and then basically your main source of income is taken away, which is the offering in gathering of the offerings on a, in a service is taken away from you. Transitioning everybody online is is difficult and it, it does take a, a toll and an effect for sure we've been we've been blessed our, most of our people have have responded and and have helped but i've been counseling a lot of pastors and talking to a lot of pastors that that is not the case um, and they've been hit a lot harder trying you know how do we encourage people to get online and and give and and i think now churches need that uh financial boost and and so i'd encourage anybody and everybody uh, to, this is not the time to pull back or hold back or wait until churches churches need the uh, the offerings to come, to keep coming in. And churches need that worship service. They need the singing. But at the same time, the province is saying, no, 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 you're going to spread the COVID-19 virus by spitting as you sing. Yeah. Those are challenges as well for you because those that's a big crazy. part of the service yeah. and worshiping God, right? Yeah, that is a, a new law for those who aren't aware. The, the government has said we, we can gather. We're not allowed to gather uh, with a children's ministry as of yet. Yet daycares and day camps can, st can gather. So we have a daycare in our facility that can, the kids can come in and be daycare under restrictions five days of the week. But on Sunday, we do a service. They're not allowed to be in the children's ministry. So those are, those are, those are some of the complications. And then this whole congregation. Conflicting, right? Yeah, it's conflicting. And then yeah. these, this, whole, this whole idea of we can gather, but we can't sing. Like singing is somehow uh, like the worst thing you could possibly do. It, it, it doesn't feel like our church. That, that, that's, uh, singing is a big part of our church, a big part of, of yes, everyone's church. Yes, I've been to your churches. church a few times, like a rock concert. <laughs> yeah. Go, right? yeah, it's uh, music is a big part of it. So 
So we, we are, yeah, we're having to navigate all of those things, and we're hoping that as uh, things open up a little bit more that, that we'll be able to open up. We have to find creative ways around all that. I can imagine. Now, Pastor Kelly, you said you've met with other pastors as well. What are some of their biggest concerns during this COVID-19 pandemic? Ah, the biggest concerns as we start talking about opening up again is the biggest concern is is still the perception and the fear and the 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 idea now of uh, people being afraid to come back to, to church when it, even when it does open up. Is and it I more th- some of the seniors that are? No, more well, concerned? no, I think it's more young people to be quite honest. The, yeah, I don't know if you you know if you go downtown shopping, uh, it's not the seniors that are hiding at home. They're all out shopping. Um, it seems to be. <laughs> so I don't care. I want out. <laughs> I want out. Uh, that's it. And, and it, that's amazing. So good for them. Yeah, yeah. Th- th- it is. Um, but there's a lot of people that are cautious, and and some you know that are vulnerable, and some that you know they should be. But I think there's going to be. I think one of my biggest concerns, and, and you know, pastors I've been talking to, biggest concerns is this growing divide between you know, um, this is crazy and we should just get together anyway and, you know, forget all these stupid rules and, and meet regardless. And then you got the other camp is like, this is going too fast. We shouldn't meet yet at all. And it's growing divide even in congregations. And I think unity in this time is, is probably the, the biggest thing we need to be aware of and fight for. Have you chatted with some of the government officials as well, expressing your concerns, not just your concerns, but some of the other pastors here in southwestern Alberta? Yes, I have, yeah. How did that go? It's it's gone well, very uh, receptive, um, very open. We've we've had uh, we've made some headway in, in some things and in other areas not so much. But they are. I've got the sense from our government they're very much listening. Um, they're I think they're proceeding very wisely. I think we're seeing the results in Alberta where they're proceeding um, wisely and and stuff. So I they've been very receptive. I've been it's been it's been an encouraging time that way. And I what I've am sensing is a growing trend of, of more interaction between the church and uh, the government, and I think that's only healthy. How do you feel about the fact that the government says restaurants, pubs, and bars can have up to 150 people, but the church only 50 people? And I mean, a lot of these servers are actually touching the food as they're bringing it out to your table, yet communion, you can't, you can't participate in that just yet. No. There's, again, a little bit of a conflict there. Like, what's going on? The regulations this, this week actually state that no food can be served in a church. Communion is one of those things. And if, if you want to uh, socialize and eat you know, a meal, go to a restaurant after the service is what the regulations <laughs> state. So wait I'm, a going, minute. I'm like, wait a second. Like, w- w- where is the discrepancy? There are a lot of discrepancies going on. And um, in fairness, there's a lot of things moving very quickly, and, and, but uh, it, it is, there's a lot of discrepancies that don't make a lot of sense in some ways where, where it's okay to meet, in, for instance, with a group of six in a, in a restaurant from six different households if we want with no social distancing, but yet we can't, we have to, we can't be within six feet of any individual outside of our home. In, in a church service. So how does that make of, you feel? It, well, it, it's, Is that frustrating? It's, it's very frustrating because I mean, we're, we feel like we're being held to a different standard for, you know, for, for reasons um, that, that, you know, we, we're not certain of uh, as to what they call uh, churches, um, gatherings, that are, you know, some of the most dangerous out there and super spreader events and all the rest of these things. And yet, and yet I see gatherings happening all over the place where I'm going, well, how is that gathering any different than what we're doing in the church? And it does it feel at times that uh, we are being put in a box as, as churches that we are, you know, we're all in small buildings. Um, we're all super huggy and touchy. We all sing... I don't know how it's dangerous or, or something happens in there that it becomes this, this dangerous event. And we have state-of-the-art facilities. Uh, we use social distancing. We do all the same regulations. We're, we're very cautious and careful, and we care for our people as well. And so when you're being forced in regulations where people can gather in a facility away from yours, and uh, you're not held responsible for the, what can happen in your facility, it's very frustrating. How about tapping into some federal funding, like a lot of other groups have done? And churches and nonprofit agencies, do you have that opportunity? Uh, we've had access to uh, some grants that we're doing because of my city care, um, and because we're helping with some of the needs in the community. And so we've been able to access some of that. Uh, no federal grants of as of yet, but uh, again, when it came to talking about, you know, the, a lot of these businesses get fi- you know, funding or, or you know uh, aid and this kind of stuff. Uh, churches and charities haven't been considered in that, and so. 
we've been okay. You know, we're large enough and we've been managing uh, well. And so we're not in a destitute situation. So I don't want to sound like destitute, but there's a lot of pastors I'm talking to and a lot of churches that I'm really concerned about whether they will survive. Well, and some churches don't own their own buildings as well. Yes. Are they getting a break from the landlords? Right. You know, some of them are clear title. Yeah. Great. They don't have to worry about it. But other ones, you know, the landlords, they're saying, you know, we, we want our money. Yeah, I talked to a pastor the other day and, uh, who oversees 30 churches and two of his churches are, are needing to close down because they just can't afford to keep rent because they have no income coming in. And, and, and so they're going to have to close the, their doors because of that. Have to keep praying for God's leading, guidance, wisdom and discernment through these difficult times. Absolutely. Pastor Kelly Stickle with My Victory Churches in Lethbridge of Southern Alberta. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. And behalf of all of us here at Bridge City News, I'm Hal Roberts. God bless. Thanks for watching.